Okay. Good evening, everyone. Today is the 15th of April. I don't know if you can believe it. In the United States, it's actually tax day. So we are all busy uh, paying our taxes, trying to get our taxes done. People are running to the, um, to the post office because they want to make sure that their taxes are filed. They are um, getting their, um, their postage ready. They're packing everything up. Many people are filing electronically. And in fact, the US government is encouraging all us all to file electronically because it's a lot easier for them and um, a lot easier for us really um, if you do continue to file electronically you're actually going to get some benefit from that and eventually if you don't file electronically you're going to be paying a penalty so they're moving us all towards filing electronically and I think that's a really wonderful thing so my taxes are in already and all my things are filed Whew! So I don't have to worry about that. So for those of you who are worried, I hope your taxes are done. If not, you've applied for an extension. And I don't know how you pay your taxes um, outside of the United States, but maybe some uh, enterprising person will type in the chat and just tell me, how do you pay your taxes in Singapore? How do, what's tax day in Singapore or in Malaysia or in Vietnam? I'd love to know. And so would um, everybody who's on the, on the webinar today. Today, we're gonna be talking about skin. And I mentioned briefly when I first started that I actually suffered from um, some uh, very uh, troublesome skin conditions for a while. And one of them, here, that's a little better. I think that's, I think that's better. Um, some troublesome skin conditions, not so much on my face, but on my hands. So here on the back of my hands, sometimes on my elbow, I actually had some trouble above one of my eyes, my shins and um, uh, dry scaly skin that would not go away, was very itchy and would have other uh, troublesome consequences. But as you can see, and I'll bring my hands close up to the microphone, I'm not making fists at you, I'm just trying to show you what I have. My skin is now completely clear. Um, it was a process, it did not happen overnight, and some of it had to do with diet. We're not going to be talking as much about diet today, but the role of diet in skin is really critical. And I'll be mentioning that as we go along, but I want you to know um, what are the essential oils that you can use. Now, the first thing I wanna start with by saying is that um, you wanna have a diagnosis before you actually begin to apply essential oils to your skin, especially if the skin is very raw or irritated. If you don't have a diagnosis, please seek medical assistance before trying anything. So now I'm gonna share my screen with you. Okay. Here we go. Okay, terrific. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Elena Jordan, and we've been joining with each other on a weekly basis for almost six years now. And sometimes we go back and we revisit certain topics. Today is no different. We're actually talking about skin. We have talked about skin in the past. And many of you are very concerned with your skin and um, how you want to protect it and make it look better. You're concerned about scarring, perhaps, or other troublesome issues that you have. Some of you have children that have skin conditions or skin issues. Now remember, I am not a doctor. So at the end of the presentation, um, if you have a diagnosis, please don't type in, my son has such and such and such and such. I can support you on your journey, but I cannot diagnose you. So let's be mindful of that. And hopefully, as I get to the end of the presentation, you'll have a lot of really great ideas that will point you in the right direction for solutions. As always, I want to say thank you to our Presidential Diamond team, to everyone who's on this call, who supports us, who really acts as a mentor to me, because many of you, and you know who you are, um, provide support emotional and uh, business-wise and in friendship and have for many, many years. And for that, I am eternally grateful. We are a strong and caring team. And I think the community that we've created is a community that values and fosters authentic friendship and authentic connection. And that's, if I can do one thing here in this space, that's what I wanna to continue to do. Okay, so the um, ideas in today's presentation come basically from the book, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today. And if you've been on a while, you've heard all about this book. It is the top 50 health issues from A to Z. And you're gonna see some updates about this coming online very soon. I'm working on it. Um, as you know, I announced last week that my website is live, uh, elenajordan.com. And that website is not about me, it's about you. It is your home for your team. 
And so uh, the new updates and things coming up will be uh, announced there on the website. This is fondly known as the LRP book, and that's really the lifeblood of our business folks. So we want to make sure that you understand what an LRP is. You can talk to people about LRP, what our LRPs do, and we're going to have some recommendations at the end of, the, um, of this presentation. Okay, doTERRA essential oils for skin. Now I have to say, this young lady has beautiful skin. It is just luminous, it has no flaws, she doesn't have any sorts of issues. This is just beautiful skin. And so um, what we wanna try to achieve is the same type of skin. And even if you uh, don't look exactly like this lady, you wanna have the best skin that you possibly can have for your age, for your circumstances, for your lifestyle. All of those things are important to note, but. Um, certainly this lady uh, is an example that we can all um, be, be interested in, in mirroring. Okay, so one of the things we want to talk about is why do we use essential oils and what are some of the benefits of essential oils for skin? Number one is that they're natural and safe, but they also have certain properties that we want to make sure that when we're using our, our skincare are contained in there, that the essential oils are soothing, cleansing, and purifying. Our skin is the largest organ of our body. It is one of the uh, most important things that we take care of because it works really in two ways. It works, number one, to protect us from outside threats. So it basically covers every single thing on the exterior of our body to protect us and to keep us healthy. Healthy. But the other thing that does is it acts as a chimney. So what do I mean by that when I say it acts as a chimney? It allows us to release toxins. So that's why sometimes when we are having difficulties with our skin and we're not happy with the way it looks or the way it's performing, if you will, although it's not a, it's not a circus animal to be performing tricks, we can look back to some of the things that maybe we have ingested or taken into our bodies and that the chimney is now releasing. So sometimes when we have skin imperfections, we want to think carefully about what kinds of toxins are, is our body releasing and what is our body telling us that it's releasing by the, um, by the condition that we're seeing of our skin? Okay, use of essential oils. Obviously, we can use them a couple of different ways. We can use direct topical application, and I would call that NEAT, and that would be without any sorts of um, uh, carrier oils or other extenders. That would be just NEAT on the skin. And we can add essential oils to our cleansers, lotions and moisturizers, as long as they are pure. So if you're using essential oil or, a mo um, I'm sorry, a uh, cleanser, lo lotion or moisturizer, and you know that it doesn't have toxic ingredients, you've purchased it um, from maybe a health food store, or maybe you're just using plain ordinary coconut oil or some other non-toxic um, emollient, you can add essential oils to that. What you don't want to do is add essential oils to anything that has toxins in it. So don't go to your local, um, I don't know, market and pick up an inexpensive lotion and then add essential oils to it. Because what's going to happen? The essential oils are actually going to act as drivers. What do I mean by that? It means that they're going to push the toxins further into your skin. And that's the last thing that you want. And the other thing is the uh, essential oils really are going to be negated by the toxic um, cream or lotion that you're putting on your skin. So be very mindful when you're mixing essential oils with any sort of emollient, you wanna make sure that it's completely pure. And then of course you can use essential oil infused skincare products like the ones that doTERRA um, has pre-made. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those in a moment. So um, we when we talk about skin, we talk about dilution because dilution does two different things. It can actually slow down the absorption of essential oils on the skin. So if we are having any sort of a skin issue, Rather than the oil, essential oil be, being applied and then evaporating quickly, we can slow down how quickly that essential oil evaporates. The other thing we wanna think about is moisturizing the skin. Fractionated coconut oil can be a wonderful and pure moisturizer. But we wanna also, uh, the last thing we wanna think about is that essential oils in general, essential oils in general, are drying to the skin. I'm gonna repeat that because this is a, a fact that people tend to miss. Essential oils in general are tend to be drying to the skin. 
And why is that? It's because they are volatile compounds. They are not moisturizing in any way. And most of them are steam distilled or cold pressed. And it's true that some of the essential oils that are cold pressed have small amounts of fats in there, but so small. And really most of the cold pressed essential oils are citrus oils, which um, in general tend to be even more drying to the skin. So let's use an example. If I had a skin condition and I applied lavender directly to my skin, my, let's say my skin is very dry, I apply the lavender very directly to my skin, I expect that the lavender is going to soothe my skin and actually my skin gets drier and itchier and more uncomfortable. And now I'm confused. What should I do? How should I be applying the lavender oil? The answer is applying it with a carrier oil. So if you're diluting your essential oil, you wanna use three drops of carrier oil to one drop of essential oil to start. If you find that your skin does not feel comfortable or that in general you have very sensitive skin, you're applying this uh, essential oil to a baby or a child or an older person you can actually double the ratio of drops of carrier oil to essential oil. You wanna start with a small dose, one to two drops, and this can be repeated every four to six hours as necessary. And as always, we wanna avoid the skin around the eyes, the inner ears, and damaged skin. Now I say around the eyes, I mean specifically close enough to the eyes that the essential oils could get into the eyes. But there are instances where essential oils around the eyes, almost like eyeglasses. If we were making some googly eyeglasses with our finger around our eyes can actually be very effective um, for the eyes and for any sort of damaged skin. Okay, so now, which essential oils should I use for my skin? And I have to say, while I like this photograph, I don't love some of these oils specifically for skin. I do love frankincense for skin. Aroma Touch is used extensively in massage. And um, I would say um, maybe the, um, uh, what's the one? The console up on the top is used a lot on the skin. But some of the other ones, I'm not so sure that they're necessarily skin soothing. They may be used for other things, but not necessarily to soothe the skin. Love you. Hello, I have not... Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Um, whoa. I've never had that happen before. Oh, and now I'm on the wrong presentation. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's talk about skin imperfections. Um, when we have skin imperfections, we're basically talking about things like, um, we're talking about blemishes or pimples. Um, people call them blackheads or zits. They have a hundred different colloquial names. Um, some people are plagued with um, uh, blemishes during their teen years and then they go away. Some people have no problems with blemishes and then later on in midlife, they begin to notice, oh my goodness, I have so many blemishes, what's happening to me? Some women or even men during menopause notice that they're developing blemishes and blemishes can appear and disappear at will. I will mention two things. Number one is many blemishes are due to hormones. And so you wanna look, especially ladies, where you are in your cycle or in your even in your life cycle, how old or how young are you? How old or how young? is your child. Second thing you want to think about is um, what are we eating? So I know in the case of my son, my son was very troubled with acne for the longest time. Seems to have cleared up now after a long course of trying to rework his diet and um, different, trying to use different things on his skin topically. But one of the things that we did uh, notice, and I know that other moms have noticed this too, that when he ate a lot of dairy products, his skin could not tolerate it and he would immediately begin to see blemishes. So recently he went on a a, um, a trip with his team he, when they went down to Florida and they uh, to practice at a training camp and when he came back his skin really didn't look good and I didn't want to say anything because I know he's very self-conscious about it and finally after about a day or so he said you know when we were there they had the most delicious chocolate milk 
And he said, and I drank it every day, mom, and now I see what it did to my skin. And so there was a combination of things going on there. One was the milk, probably the dairy products, and then all the sugar in the chocolate milk that doesn't help. We want to make sure that we're managing our sugar intake and probably our dairy intake. Those were the first two that I would take a look at if you're having trouble with blemishes of any kind. And so for him, it was the one-two punch. And he came home and he said, well... It was really delicious and I really enjoyed it. So I don't regret it, but I won't drink that again. And he said, I'll just make sure that I get back on the, on the bandwagon right away. So for skin imperfections, let's talk about some of these. HD Clear, as you know, which is a topical blend and comes in a roll-on. Lavender, Melaleuca, Frankincense, Grapefruit, Patchouli, Helichrysum, Sandalwood, and Rose. And most of these oils can be applied directly to the skin. Again, with some exceptions, I would make sure that I was diluting them with fractionated coconut oil. Our Rose oil actually comes pre-diluted. And our Melaleuca and our Frankincense can be purchased in a roll-on like you see here. Other oils uh, tend to be super mild, oils like lavender and helichrysum. Sandalwood also can be very moisturizing, but even those oils, if your skin is very damaged, you wanna make sure that you're applying them with a carrier oil. For the most part, that should be frank, fractionated coconut oil, but we're gonna talk about other um, blending techniques in a minute. Anti-aging. So we talked first about blemishes, so usually teen years, sometimes a little bit older. And now we're going to talk about older skin or skin that's beginning to break down. The collagen is beginning to break down. The elasticity of the skin is beginning to break down. You want to make sure that you're maintaining the best skin elasticity that you can. And I just realized that the one product that's not on here is Yarrow Palm. It's our brand new product that I know that most of you have tried at this point. You sort of smooth it on your skin. I've actually mixed it sometimes with a little bit of extra blue tansy. And if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you've probably seen Emily Wright doing the same thing, turning her whole face blue. But she um, she's very proud of how her skin actually has turned around. And from what I understand, she did have some, uh, some periods in her life when her skin was not that great. So um, this anti-aging profile, uh, protocol is a successful one using things like immortel, patchouli, helichrysum, myrrh, frankincense, and rose can be very healing and soothing to the skin and also begin to um, replace some of the nutrients, the oils, and the elasticity that the, our skin begins to use, lose as we age. Okay, smooth complexion. Now, I go through smooth complexion really hand in hand with um, blemishes because I feel like when we talk about a smooth complexion, we can be talking about actually scarring or uh, getting rid of something that um, maybe a stretch mark or a... Um, or um, a damaged skin, something that maybe we had a, um, an accident or a cut or a burn, and now we're trying to smooth our complexion and make it look a little bit better. Uh, in the first photograph that we saw with the young lady, part of the reason why her skin looked so beautiful was that it was super smooth and without blemishes and also almost had a sheen to it. And that's, we associate with that sheen um, with health and vibrancy. And we want to make sure that if we can achieve that, and that has to do with moisturizing. So let's talk about smooth complexion first. The oils listed here, and I'm going to read them out because I know some of you are on a phone or you're driving. And for those of you who don't love it, when I read from the screen, um, just please bear with me because you know that sometimes there are people that are on listen only. So things like coriander, clary sage, geranium, helichrysum, myrrh, sandalwood, ylang ylang, neroli, blue tansy, rose, and jasmine. Um, some of the uh, oils, especially the last four, neroli, blue tansy, rose, and jam jasmine, are some of our newer oils that have been known for centuries, really for millennia, about their healing and soothing and smoothing properties to the skin. Women throughout history have used jasmine in their hair, for um, hair products, for uh, uh, skin products, and also rose. Rose ha has been known to um, heal wounds. It is a, a beautiful, um, it's not only a beautifully scented product, it's an essential oil that is uh, great for healing and repairing the skin. What are, when we're repairing the skin, we're doing a couple of different things. We're replacing collagen in the skin. We're allowing the skin to refresh and renew itself for the, for the skin cells to begin to grow again. 
um, in a, and create that web that's going to protect us and heal us. Um, when we talk about skin purifying, we're usually talking about skin that's oily. So if you have oily skin and you um, suffer for this or you have a teenager in your house that uh, is troubled by oily skin, you can begin to clean your skin with some of these oils. Now, what I wouldn't do is add all of these oils into one bottle and begin spraying my face with it. That would make no sense. What I would do is try one essential oil and let's take grapefruit as an example because that's what the photograph is. And I would perhaps add a single drop into my cleaning regimen. Now, if I was using a foaming cleanser to cleanse my face, I would add an extra drop of grapefruit. And if you were using the uh, doTERRA products, just add it into the palm of your hand, apply it gently over your face, and then rinse it away. You begin to see the purifying properties when you don't see as much oiliness or as many breakouts. The skin begins to clear itself because it's got that residual essential oil on it that's protecting it and keeping um, uh, keeping it healthy. Now, let's talk about a little bit about grapefruit and all of the um, uh, citrus oils and what they what happens in the sun. So we know that uh, grapefruit and other uh, citrus essential oils are what's called photosensitive. What that basically means is if you were to apply it and then go out in the sun, direct sunlight, you do run the chance of burning your skin because it basically thins out the top layer of the skin, making it more sensitive to the sun and making it possible for you to burn. So if you're using your skin purifying essential oils on your face, you wanna make sure that you're using them at night. And then in the morning, by the time you've woken up in the morning, the essential oil will have evaporated and, and not be damaging to the skin. What we don't wanna do is apply these oils to our face or to other exposed parts of our body and then go out in the sun because you can run the risk of getting burned and we don't, we don't wanna make your skin burn. Skin in general should not be burned. Um, I know when I was growing up in the 1970s, people would say, oh, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get a tan. And they would um, go and lay out in their backyard or in the beach or something like that. And they would slather their body from head to foot with baby oil, which basically makes your skin burn a little bit faster and they would come out of the sun and they would be beet red and so uncomfortable, but they thought this was a wonderful thing. But now you meet these people years and years later and their skin just looks terrible. They're wrinkly, the collagen has broken down. And part of the reason why is because they've been exposed to excess sun. You wanna make sure that you're um, keeping your, sc your skin as much as possible safe in sun conditions. Doesn't mean that you should never get sun. That's not what I'm saying. Um, vitamin D is part of our, our natural regimen. We do need d vitamin D to survive. And if we put um, uh, too much sunscreen on our skin, we can actually force ourselves into a situation where we're in um, vitamin D deficit. So make sure you're getting enough sun, not with citrus oils on the exposed parts and that you're protecting your skin when need be. So if you're gonna be out at the beach all day, and I know here in New Jersey, summer's coming and everybody's getting ready for the beach and we're buying our swimsuits or getting them out of storage because we've had them in storage all winter. And, um, and now people get out into the beach and they decide they're gonna get a tan. Now I know there's a big uh, movement toward spray tans and tans that you can apply with a cream. And then also people who go to tanning beds I have to say, I don't love any of those options. I have used um, um, uh, tanning cream on my legs before because my legs are usually so pasty and I want them to look a little bit better in the summertime. But when you read the toxic ingredients and in the creams, it just makes you want to cry. So um, let's, let's continue to, to um, talk about skin purifying and be mindful of your sun exposure. Okay, now let's talk about the doTERRA skin products because you can use straight essential oils on your skin, but there's also some great products that the company has that are already made that you can use um, for your skin and, would, and to support it. So number one is the Virage Skincare Collection. I actually love this collection. I haven't been using it for a while, but I've really gotten back into it. I'm using um, the cleanser, the hydrating serum, the moisturizer, and the toner. Not the toner as much. I don't know what it is about toner, but I just forget to use it. But my daughter, who's 20 or almost 20, loves this collection and uses it all the time. 
And so um, I've actually, uh, I had a collection in my bathroom and she came in and she said, wow, mom, these are really nice. Can I borrow them? And the next thing I know, she had gone back to Texas and they were gone. But um, I'm glad she, she's using products that are good for her skin. And they are a very reasonable price. Most of the time they are packaged in a four pack like this. And you should check in your local market what the, um, what the, the, the current price is. Okay, HD Clear, another set of wonderful products. For the longest time, I actually used the foaming face wash because I loved that foaming uh, cleanser. I actually, before Virage came out, that was my go-to. Now, I don't have um, skin with blemishes in general. I've been uh, very blessed that well that way, but the foaming face wash was just a terrific way to clean my face. And when I took off my makeup at night, I loved the way my face felt. I also liked it in the summertime, it made my face feel really kind of fresh and clear. I, um, my son specifically and my daughter have used the HD Clear uh, Roll-On. What's interesting is many people avoid lotion when they have blemishes and or pimples. And what, I, what I'm gonna to recommend to you is that you not avoid lotion. Many of the products that we use to combat oily skin can be very drying to the face. And if you've ever seen anyone with those very kind of white flaky um, patches on their skin, usually they're trying to treat some sort of acne. My son was no exception to this rule, but adding the lotion in can help to moisturize the skin and maintain the balance of the skin. Our skin needs to be in balance. We can't uh, focus on one particular area and expect that um, it's gonna be resolved. Now I've talked many times about uh, my struggles with eczema, especially on my hands. And what I, what I learned over time was that I needed to be able to treat the whole person. That's when we go back to diet, we go back to drinking water, we go back to exercising and perspiring because perspiring also allows us to get toxins out of the body. When we talk about um, things like eczema, we can't treat just a tiny area of the skin. We have to basically upgrade the dermis. How do we do that? We moisturize the entire body, really from head to foot. Okay, so some of the other skincare items. Now, this skincare uh, set has gotten huge. And I have to say, there's so many cool things now in this product line. You can pick and choose individual products, or you can buy them all as a set. I usually keep most of them, at least one of them in my office at any given time because somebody will want to try one. I'm going to go from left to right. The hydrating cream, amazing, really thick and rich. Ladies, if you have dry skin like I do, this is a terrific product. I use it all winter long. I don't use it as much in the, in the summer months because it tends to be a little bit too heavy for the summer for me. But if you have super dry skin, you can also use it on your feet or on your elbows. It is the bomb. Um, tightening serum, also have used that many times. You're not using the Virage serum, you might wanna use this serum. Some people have different sorts of skin. I've heard of people who say, oh, you know what? I can't use Virage at all, Virage at all but I've been able to use the essential skincare. The anti-aging eye cream. So you can see this is sort of like a space age roll on. You kind of roll it on at the um, underneath your eyes. I tend to have uh, under eye bags. I think it's because I've had a lot of allergies over my life. And that, that dark circle kind of settles there from sneezing and rubbing my eyes. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of it. Maybe one day I'll move to a place where there's just not as much pollen. But um, you can have under eye bags from not sleeping or from other causes. This is a great way to soothe that um, and reduce the swelling underneath your eyes. Um, facial cleanser, it's a terrific one. It is a cream. I'm not a cream girl, ladies and gentlemen. I can't, I don't know why, but my mom loves this one. So you basically apply the, um, this cream cleanser and kind of tissue it off. Um, if you prefer something that's a little bit more foamy, then you want to look into Virage or into the HT Clear. Pore reducing toner, that's just kind of to, to get your pores looking a little bit uh, smaller. I do like this toner and I had used it in the past, but like I told you, I don't know what it is about toner. I can't get my mind there. It's like I get my whole face clean and then moisturized and then I think, oh wait, I forgot to put the toner on. So my toner lasts forever. But if I remembered it, this would probably be the one that I would be using. Um, brightening gel, okay, this is a really cool product. You actually 
press it up from the bottom, sort of like a little, um, almost like a little deodorant stick, and then a clear, cool gel comes out, and you can put it on your face wherever you have any sorts of darkening patches. Now, darkening patches can be due, due to a million different things. There, um, maybe we were sun tanning too much. Maybe we have a condition called melasma, which is um, can be hormonally based. Uh, maybe we have a scar. Now, I find that sometimes in the heat, uh, my neck will begin to look a little bit dark. It's almost like I've gotten a suntan on my neck and not on my face. And part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that some of my makeups have sunscreen and I don't always put them on my neck. So this brightening gel, I actually, and I know this sounds crazy, folks, but I'm applying it to my neck and I think it's making my neck look better. Now, who? I don't think anybody's looking at my neck except for me. But in case you look at my neck later and you love the way it looks, please let me know. Um, the anti-aging moisturizer is sort of the counterpart to the hydrating cream. So the hydrating cream, in my opinion, is for dry skin, and the anti-aging is for neutral skin. It is called more anti-aging, but I think it's just a little bit thinner than the hydrating, so you can, you can choose whatever you want. And then the invigorating scrub. Okay, cool things about scrubs is they can take absolutely take dirt and impurities off of our skin. What you don't wanna do is scrub your skin to death. You wanna be gentle with your skin. So if you're one of these people who tends to wanna just scrub and scrub until your skin is red and actually goes because it's so squeaked out, all of the oils have been removed. Um, don't do that. That's not a good thing, folks. You wanna maintain some of the oils on your skin. You want gentle cleansing and invigorating scrub, no different. Try using this once a week. And if your skin is really sensitive, maybe even once every other week. It's meant to kind of remove that top layer of dead skin cells and your skin really does look fresh and revived after you've used it, but we don't wanna overdo it. Our skin is delicate. So take care of yourself, folks. Don't get crazy. Okay, here we go. Spa, I love the spa. The doTERRA spa line is so super cool. I use the body wash and the body butter every single day. Um, the detoxifying mud mask, I have to say I'm not a mask girl. And when I do use masks, the one that I just love is the kind that you, that doTERRA does make, of course, that you kind of paint it over your face and then you peel it off like the face of Dorian Gray. I love that kind. But if you're a mask person, this is the mask for you. The hand and body lotion in the blue tube is unscented. And I wanna make sure that you're using this um, with your essential oils to be able to provide moisture, especially if you're not into using fractionated coconut oil all over your body. I have to say, I love fractionated coconut oil, maybe on my feet, my knees, and my elbows that are super dry. But if I put it all over my body, then I have to stand around and wait to put my clothes on. It makes me crazy. So I use the hand and body lotion. I have a tube of it in my bathroom. But for me, the go-to is the body butter. And I put the body butter on from the neck down, from the neck down every single solitary day. I get out of the shower and that's my go-to. And you could say, man, Elena, but that's not as greasy as fractionated coconut oil. Maybe it is, but for me, it soaks into my skin better and I just love it. Citrus Plus hand lotion, I actually keep a tube of that or the rose lotion in my car. And I, I really, it's great. I, whenever I'm at a stoplight or something, I'm putting on hand lotion so my hands are staying nice and um, soft. The uh, lip balms are the bomb. I use the lip balms every day and I keep them all over my house. I have one in every purse. I have them in my car. And shout out to Nick Kilpack because when I told him the other day that I keep a lip balm in my car and some maybe one of my family members had used him, he was totally grossed out. But I always figure, hey, better they use a lip balm than they don't use anything. So for those of you who are germaphobes, please don't judge me. I love to keep lip balms all over the house. My favorite is the tropical. That's the orange one. Um, the soap, I actually keep that in my guest bathroom. And when people come, I, I always have that available. So come to my house and take a bath and you'll be able to see the, the soap and then the body scrub. Okay, total, um, total transparency here. Love the body scrub, but it makes my husband crazy because when you put it on you're supposed to rinse it off in the shower okay so don't tell him because he's not listening right now he's in the other room 
rinse it off in the shower and then it gets on the floor of the shower and then my husband does a charlie brown which basically means he goes flying because there's grease on the bottom of the shower so i don't want my husband to go flying and crack his head open so i tend to use it just on maybe my hands and my feet or maybe if i'm taking a bath i'll use it quickly and then rinse it off but for me at least but if you live alone or maybe you have two showers i don't know it's a great thing and you should use it okay let's keep going Okay, a skin a do it yourself. You can find tons of essential oil skincare DIYs on the blog. You want to go to doTERRA.com, US English blog products. You can just type in in your Google search bar doTERRA blog um, DIYs and it also come up. This is a uh, kind of a smoothing um, uh, lotion or or cream that somebody made. I love this one. It's it's kind of, I think they whip it up either with a blender or with a mixer, which is why it looks like whipped cream, which is really cool. Um, one of my favorite products, Correct X. If you've never tried Correct X, you need to try it. It is a blend of melaleuca, cedarwood, helichrysum, frankincense, and lavender. It comes in this little tube. And what you can do is keep it in your bathroom next to the Band-Aids and use it instead of neosporin or bacitracin. We want to make sure that you're using as few antibiotic products or products that contain antibiotics as possible. We are being exposed to excessive amounts of antibiotics through our food sources and antifungals through our vegetable sources. And we want to make sure that we're not exposing ourselves to additional ones. So please ditch the, uh, the gels, the hand gels with the antibiotic hand gels, and then also ditch your um, neosporin or, um, or, uh, um, or myosin, I forgot the other one, um, or bacitracin, really bad folks. Just don't use them. This is the bomb. Okay, so here's some other things that you can use your Correctex for. Did you know that we can use this ointment for anything? You can use it like you would use nor Neosporin, but you can also use it for under eye puffiness, chapstick, lip gloss, eye serum, bug bites, cuticles, tattoo ointment. I do not have any tattoos, full, re full reveal here, but Americans love tattoos, so I'm putting it in here. Dry cracked skins, and you can add a little bit of peppermint for a limp plumper. So ladies, if you're having trouble with that look of thin lips and you want to plump up your lips, add your lip, add your peppermint for a lip plumper. This is just a little bit of silliness, but I thought this was kind of fun. Okay, two other products I'm going to recommend, and I don't usually do this on this line, are Waxeline and Alba. We don't have an occlusive barrier, sort of like petroleum jelly, to mix with essential oils that is natural and pure. And I recommend these two products, and really they are interchangeable. You can find them online. You can go to elenayordan.com. I have them on the shop tab there if you want to try to pick them up. Um, if you are a person who struggles with um, any sorts of eczema, seborrhea, psoriasis, you need an occlusive barrier, something that's going to keep water out. And because these two are completely unscented and they have no parabens and they're made only with natural ingredients, Waxlene, of course, is made with beeswax. You can see the little bee up there. And um, uh, Alba is made with... Um, un so it might not be the, the best for vegans, but I think the Alba is actually vegan. You can mix these with your essential oils and provide a... a very thick, greasy barrier to protect your skin. And I will tell you, I use either one of these interchangeably on the backs of my hands in the winter because I find that if I don't protect my hands, a lot of moisture will actually cause my hands to crack. My fingers will begin to get so dry and then I can't repair them. So this is my, um, my insurance policy, if you will. And I use these two products all the time. And I've mentioned them to you um, offline sometimes, but I thought I would put them here so that you could see them. Okay, our uh, LRP of the month is still our cleaning products. And the reason why we're pitching cleaning products right now is because everyone is cleaning their house. We're going through, we're rolling up our sleeves, we're getting into our attics and our basements and our garages. We are throwing um, everything out and then we're cleaning up with the space that we had left. We're having garage sales. And so we wanna make sure that we're cleaning and keeping everything fresh. Many of you um, outside of the United States are going to be going on your children's uh, 
Your children's school holidays are starting at the 1st of June. So you've got about a month and a couple of weeks to really clean up and get ready to go away on holiday. So use your cleaning products. Um, this is your LRP for April for 150 PV um, at least. If you are in Singapore, you or Malaysia, just eliminate the pink pepper. Singapore, Malaysia, just eliminate the pink pepper. And we've done the math for you already. So if you're in the US, these uh, seven products will um, help you to um, uh, clean your house and keep it clean in the month of April, and they will equal 150 PV. In the weeks ahead, we're gonna be doing um, uh, a class about why 150 PV and how this can be used to build your team effectively. I didn't do it this week, but I'm going to be doing it probably in two weeks. I have to get through. Um, I have to get through Easter. Easter is next Sunday, everyone, and so I want to make sure that I, I get through Easter, and then we'll and we'll talk a little bit. We've got a lot of questions in the chat, which is terrific. Um, here are the uses for the products. You can take a screenshot of this if you wish. We showed this last week, and I'm going to continue to show it probably throughout the month. I want to make sure that you understand why we're recommending these products. We do have the math to back it up, so you don't have to be concerned that this is not going to be enough PV for you to um, make your bonuses. We're talking about your power of three bonus. Okay, questions? You're going to type them in the chat while, as I begin to finish up. And then um, I'll be ready to answer your questions. Questions about skin, questions about LRP, get ready to answer. Now, I have one question for you, which I'm gonna ask you, and you don't have to um, answer it on the line if you don't want to. You can type it, you can go to my Instagram page, Elena Jordan. You can go to the um, website, elenajordan.com. You can send me a, a private message at Facebook um, at Elena Jordan. But here's my question for you of the day. Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone who's helping you down your path? And my questions are, how often do you meet with them? Do you discuss business only? Is it through an organization that you belong to? And is it a paid mentorship? I'm gonna be asking questions about mentorship because I think it's important for us to have mentors of all kinds. So on a personal note, I have several different mentors. I have mentors for my spiritual journey. I have mentors for my business. Um, I have mentors, personal mentors um, that help me for, for family and for growth and for uh, expectations. And I try to integrate all of those aspects of my life. But mentors sometimes cannot be all things. Oh, also for my exercise and health uh, and wellness journey. Sometimes a mentor is a very structured um, relationship where you meet on a regular basis or you talk to them once a week. Mentoring can be very structured or mentoring can be even someone that you found on the internet and you're following them assiduously because the ideas and the concepts that they are presenting are really helping you now along, in your, along your journey. I wanna encourage you to find mentors if you don't have them and to clearly understand what a mentor is. And we're gonna be talking about mentors in the weeks ahead. But if you wanna take a picture of this, you wanna answer me now or answer later, but I wanna hear, do you have a mentor and how are you working with them? Okay, remember, you are amazing. I'm so happy that you're here. You're gonna have a terrific week. I'm feeling very cheerful. Again, it's Monday, but I love Mondays and I'm feeling cheerful. I'm here drinking my coffee. It's a little cheerful. It's a little, it's a little chilly here today. Not as cold as it has been, but all of my plants are blooming. Everything just looks amazing outside and we are going into Holy Week. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a Catholic and I will not be working on um, from sundown on Thursday until um, Sunday night. So you won't uh, hear me back until Monday morning when I'll be back on this line Easter Monday. But um, I want to just wish you all a wonderful and happy and blessed season for those of you who are celebrating Easter. Happy Easter. And um, I'm so happy that um, I get to do this every week with you. Thank you for being here. You are an amazing team and I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful week. Okay, so let's see. We want to stop the share. We got a lot of questions. Yee I love questions. Let me see what everybody's saying. Actually, let me stop, pause the recording, and thank you all for being here. Let's stop the recording.